What's up, Bragging Family? Today I'm bringing you Dollar Tree Halloween DIYs. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a pumpkin emoji in the comments. Now let's begin. The next time you're in Dollar Tree, pick up some laundry baskets and poster board. I'm gonna start off by gluing three laundry baskets together. Two will be glued with the tops touching each other and then one to the bottom of those two. I'm gonna be making a nutcracker based off of one that I found at Home Goods. I'm using the laundry baskets as the main foundation of the nutcracker and then I'm gonna use poster board as some of the the main features of the Nutcracker. So the pants, the shirt, the arms, the head. Now this is inspired by Sarah Jane as Chic on the Cheap and Jessica Lynn at home. Both of them created Nutcrackers. I saw Sarah Jane do it first and then shortly after she did hers, I saw Jessica Lynn do one using poster board. I thought this was such a brilliant idea. If you're monetizing off of someone who inspired you with their ideas, why not thank them? So please check these talented ladies out. When you're starting to attach the poster board, I recommend having somebody on hand to help you so you can line up things perfectly. I used a mixture of tape and hot glue tape initially to get things lined up and then glue to set it into place. Now as the main base for the legs, I used Dollar Tree foam board. What I did is I just rolled it and then after I have it rolled, I took zip ties to make sure it didn't unravel on me and then I used glue to just go ahead and make sure it was nice and secure. As the main foundation of all of this, I'm using a pizza pan and that's where I glue these legs too. Now you can paint the details of Frankenstein on. The only issue with that is if you make a mistake, it's really hard to color match to the poster board. So I actually recommend using craft foam. I'll link this pack down below for you guys. It's from Walmart. So what you'll do is you'll use craft foam to create these details. So if you make any mistakes, you can fix that with the craft foam versus painting it on and then you have to like fix it with paint. Once the craft foam is cut, you can start gluing it to the poster board. I would definitely Definitely use hot glue to do this. After all the details were glued on, I was left with this Frankenstein nutcracker that stands around six feet tall. I love him so much and I definitely would love to try a jack-o'-lantern, ghost, and other Halloween characters in the future. Right now Dollar Tree is selling these jumbo MDF DIY wood pumpkins ghosts, witches, and castles. So I got the wood pumpkins and ghosts. I had my husband spray paint the pumpkins orange and then the ghost white. You can always use regular paint. We just use spray paint because it's much quicker. I'm going to use these to create a Halloween arch. So first off, I start lining up all of my pieces to create the arch shape. And once I've done that, I start to glue them together using a mixture of hot glue and wood glue. The wood glue is going to make sure they stick together, but the hot glue just makes it so that it dries more quickly for you to move this thing around. I don't glue all the pumpkins and ghosts together. Instead, I'm making three separate pieces for my arch. That way it's easy to break down and set up. I'm going to be placing the arch at the front of my outside stairs, so I need some support behind the wood pieces, especially if it gets windy outside. So I'm going to be using some wood. This is actually one fence post we got for two dollars at Home Depot and cut in half. I'm placing the sides on top of their own piece of wood then using little screws to screw the MDF pieces into the wood. That way they aren't going anywhere. To attach this to our stair rails, we're just going to use zip ties because I didn't screw all over the post. I'm able to slide the zip tie behind some of the MDF pieces and then tie the zip tie to the stair rail. This keeps the post nice and secure. This isn't heavy. It's not going to damage your rail at all. After both posts are secured, it's time to attach the top. We used a drill to create some holes on our ghost. That way we could zip tie the top of the arch to the sides. That's how I made this Halloween arch which honestly I am so proud of this DIY. I saw these and I thought that they would be perfect for an arch. I do recommend sealing the wood especially if it rains in your area in October. I didn't do that because I don't have time. I film so much while taking care of two babies it's rough sometimes so I do have to skip some steps but definitely seal the wood if you can. You can use this indoors just don't use post and use command strips instead to stick the pieces to your wall. It looks super cool and festive indoors. Let's make a spell book with a moving eye. You're going to need a hardcover book. I got mine from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need a Cabo Chan. I got a two pack from Amazon for $9.99. I will link them down below for you. I'm going to place a Cabo Chan on top of the book and then outline it with a marker. Once I've done that, I'm taking a utility knife and cutting the front hardcover of the book where I traced. This DIY is inspired by Wicked Makers here on YouTube. They're an amazing channel. I highly recommend checking out. They aren't a Dollar Tree based 
channel, but instead a DIY channel that specializes in Halloween and spooky DIYs. You're going to need a phone for this project. I went to YouTube and found this moving eye video that will be linked below. I placed the phone underneath the hardcover, lining up the hole with the eye that is on my phone. Once it is lined up, I trace around my phone and then I start to cut where I traced. I need to make a hole big enough to fit my phone inside so that the book can close properly. I decided to keep my phone higher up. That way I could just use my scissors to cut the hole instead of a utility knife and I could slide my phone in and out of the hole easily. So keep cutting your paper down till your hole is deep enough. You're going to take your Cabo Chan, place it inside of that hole and then use a glue gun to glue it into place. You can also use your glue gun to create the eyelid around the eye. All you have to do is just keep layering glue to create that eyelid depth and shape. You can use your glue gun to create wording on your book as well as designs like spider webs and binder details. You can use it to age the book just by gliding the tip of the glue gun across the book creating lines and stringy pieces. There's so much you can do here. I also ended up making scars and stitches similar to the Hocus Pocus book which I have done in the past. I got a pack of fake spiders. You're going to see me use a lot in this video from Amazon. Dollar Tree does carry fake spiders but if you're going to need a bunch in bulk go to Amazon it's cheaper to do it that way and you get a whole bunch so I'm going to be gluing some of those spiders to my book after you're done creating your designs and the glue is dried you can start painting on top of the glue so I went with a bunch of different colors at first I just put brown all over the place and then I decided it needed some black. I eventually added gold. You just play it by ear. I really recommend stippling the color on because that helps give it an aged look. Anyways, after you're done with all of that, just put your phone inside of the book, press play, and look how cool this is. I think this is so awesome. And you can use an old phone and just have it on loop. I like this is so easy to do. I'm telling you guys and it's just so cool, especially since it's something you made yourself. And if you bought it in stores, it's going to look nothing like this. I definitely have to use this technique to remake my Hocus Pocus book. So make sure you check out my TikTok and Instagram because I plan on uploading that there. Dollar Tree carries these canisters that are great for holiday decor. So I'm going to be using four. Two of the four quart ones and two of the two quart ones. So the two quart ones are going to be glued on the top and bottom of what I'm creating and the two bigger ones are in the middle. I recommend using E6000 glue and hot glue to glue these together. I'm just using hot glue for video purposes just because I could get things done sooner. Inside of the bottom canister I put in some bags of stones that I got from Dollar Tree to weigh this down. Now I'm going to be making a toy soldier, a jack-o'-lantern toy soldier. I got this jack-o'-lantern from the Dollar Tree Plus section for $5 and I'm using command strips to attach that to the canisters. That way I can take it off whenever I want to. I'm basing this toy soldier off of a nutcracker I saw at Home Good. So I'm just doing kind of the same jacket and color scheme. The nice thing about these canisters is they take paint really well because of the material. It has like some grit to it so the paint adheres really Really nicely to it. I did have to do a few layers of each color to make it opaque so you couldn't see through the canister. You can always take a white primer and spray paint it all over the canisters ahead of time so you're only doing one layer of acrylic paint. For my toy soldier's arm, I'm going to be using black pool noodles. You can get these at Dollar Tree during Halloween time. And I'm going to cut a, down a piece to be the arm, a piece to be pretty much like the wrist, and then a piece that will be the hand. I then glue the arms down first, and then the one that's going to be the wrist with the arm, I glue those down, but I make sure I hold them in place as I wait for the hot glue to dry. Because if you try to let go of them right away, it's going to keep falling right off. You just kind of hold it in place as the glue dries. I used a broom handle from Dollar Tree to be the stick that the toy soldier is holding. I don't know what the stick is actually called. Uh, and I ended up cutting this down a bit. So I just used something to create some pressure in the middle of the handle. And then I go back and forth with the handle until it snaps off. Slide that through the pool noodle. Then I got this pumpkin ghost from Dollar Tree. I removed the head off of it. And then I removed the little styrofoam that's on it revealing wires that I push through the broom handle. So that's just going to be the top of the cane. I don't know if it's a cane. I got some mini jack-o'-lanterns that I'm using as the hands of my toy soldier. One of them I just glued directly to one of the arms and then the other one I had to cut in half and then cut the bottom off of so that it could wrap around the broom handle. 
That is it for these toy soldiers. Really easy to make. If you're not good at painting, you can always cut down poster board or craft foam to create the features of your toy soldier. This next DIY is not a Dollar Tree DIY. I wasn't sure I wanted to include this because of that, but since I don't do non-Dollar Tree DIY videos on this channel, I decided to include it. At Home right now has these moving hands. I will link below for you guys. They are $19.99. You can also find them on Amazon. Well, I saw them and really wanted to turn it into things from Adam's family. Honestly, it's not hard to do because it mainly involves paint. First off, you're going to give the hand a more human-like skin tone rather than that zombie gray color. You will have to do quite a few layers of paint waiting for each layer to dry before going to the next. It's the only way to get rid of that gray color. There will be a slightly sticky feeling to this because you are painting over a rubber latex material. Now I'm taking some red paint and using it to create the wounds or scars that Thing has. I was looking at a picture of Thing. I don't even know if it's the right picture. So I was just kind of doing what I saw and adding some more to that. Red was my base color for the scars. And then I went in with a little bit of a darker red to kind of give it some more depth. And then after that, I took a black paint and used it to create the stitches. Now I'm taking some different brown paints and using it to make the nails look a bit more dirty, more like a corpse. And then I'm also taking some of that brown paint to make more of the details in the fingers stand out more so like the little wrinkles and crevices that are on the hand even some of the veins just to make it look more like a hand again I'm gonna be using some cream concealer for this and the reason I'm using concealer is because first of all it's a skin tone color without me having to figure out what paint is gonna look like a skin color and then it's creamy so it's easy to blend I'm using two different colors I got one that's a little bit darker than my base color and then lighter than the base color and they're both from wet and wild I'm just putting them on top of the hand and using my feet to blend it out and this is gonna make it look more like I said a skin color versus just kind of weird pale color that I initially had you can use your own foundation your own concealer that's completely up to you you can also use paint if that's what you want to do it's just it's it's hard to blend paint when you don't really know what you're doing so it's so much easier to use the creamy stuff and that's how I took that at home zombie hand and turned it into Thing from the Adams Family. I know it's not perfect because Thing doesn't have bones popping out at the top. However, this is still good enough and I just think it was really cool so that's why I wanted to include it in this video. For our next project, you'll need a pumpkin pail. I recommend getting one that has lines going through it. That's gonna give you a better look for this particular DIY. I'm painting my pumpkin pail red. I couldn't find one already red. You can always go with a different color if you want to. I'm making a poison apple pumpkin pail. To create the poison look, you're gonna need your hot glue gun. If you have a dull temp one, use it on its highest setting. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start creating the main features, so the eyes and the nose, maybe it's a mouth, it looks like a nose to me, and then you're gonna create the dripping look that's at the bottom. And what this does is it creates a barrier there, so when you start to pour on the rest of the glue, when it hits that part that you already did, it's not gonna go below it. It's just kinda keeping it in place where you want it to be. So once you have the main features and details down, you go in with your glue gun and just start pouring it all over the bucket to get that glazed look. Wait for the glue to completely dry and then start painting over it. I went with a bright green color. You will have to do a few layers of paint to get a nice look to this. Just one layer of paint and you're still going to be able to see through this and the glue. I used to have a makeup channel where I turned myself into Snow White before and the Evil Witch twice. The reason I'm bringing this up is I've been able to use some of my makeup techniques with my DIYs. And this is one of them. You can take black eyeshadow and use it to create the shade that you need for this to make it look more high-end and bring that depth you need and the reason I would use eyeshadow instead of paint is because it's easier to blend and you don't end up with those harsh lines that you get when you're trying to create shadows with paint especially if you're not a professional painter it's hard to do this if you're not somebody who does it uh, professionally or even as a hobby and you're really good at it like I am I can paint basic but to create shadows with paint it's very hard for me so I use eyeshadow and it's just so easy to do I use it around the eyes nose the drip of the poison and then on the poison itself and you can just see how much more depth this brings to the apple and makes it look less cheap I got these tags from Dollar Tree I'm gonna use one and wrap it around the poison apple on the back of it 
the part that doesn't have the warding, I'm going to use eyeshadow to make it look dirtier, just kind of age it up a bit. And then I take some paint and I just paint on the word poison. I did use a little bit of black paint as well because the eyeshadow just wasn't dark enough for me when it came to the tag itself. And once I was done with the tag, I glued it into place because I had a very specific spot that I wanted it to be in. That's how I made this poison apple pumpkin pail. I love the way that it looks and it would be a great accessory if you're dressing up as any character from Snow White. I got another fun project. Get some footballs from Dollar Tree. What you're going to do is you are going to slice into them to create a mouth. Basically, we're making some Venus flytraps out of this. So you just want to make it look almost like a Pac-Man mouth. Don't throw away those pieces you cut out because you're then going to use your scissors to cut little teeth out of those pieces. Once I cut the teeth off, I start to paint the footballs a green color. I did have to do two layers of paint to make it look the way that I wanted it to look. Now I'm going to use a planter from Dollar Tree and some styrofoam rounds. I'm going to glue the styrofoam pieces inside of the planter. Once I've done that, I got these wooden dolls from Dollar Tree and I'm going to push three of them through the styrofoam. I want them to be three different levels of height. I did end up having to cut one of the dolls down just a little bit to get the height that I wanted. Once I've done that, I take my footballs and I push them through the dowels. I did take a knife and start a little hole there to make it easier to push them through. Now I take a red paint and I start to create the lips of my Venus fly traps, just small little lips. Then I take some red paint and paint the inside of the mouth just because I don't want to keep it white there. And I ended up also using a little bit of black paint just to give it more dimension so it just is not a flat red color. Now I use my hot glue gun to glue on the teeth that I cut out of those extra pieces of football. I don't make it perfect. I wasn't trying to make every teeth look alike. It gets a little hard to do that so do what works best for you. Then take a dark green paint and paint your wooden dowel. I also took that dark green paint and used it to shade where those little indents are inside of the football. It makes it look nicer this way. And then I ended up taking a lighter green paint and using it to highlight on the football just here and there. It makes the Venus fly traps look so much cooler. Now I got these green picks from Dollar Tree. They're $1.25 for five of them. I'm going to be placing them around the Venus fly traps. You can either glue them on or use zip ties. I kind of did a mixture of both. I used zip ties around the footballs themselves, but then I used glue anywhere where the greenery was on the bottom part of the wooden dowel. I fill the planter up with some stones and moss that I got at Dollar Tree. I'm just pouring them out of a planter that I used from a previous DIY. I then take some brown paint and use it to make the teeth look more rotted. I think it looks much better this way than leaving it just white. And finally, I take a lighter green and I just glide it over the greenery to make it look less plastic and stand out a bit more. I am so excited with how these turned out and they're much bigger than the ones that you buy inside of a store for like $50. I also I also made some Venus fly traps that are much larger last year and I'm actually going to share that DIY toward the end of this video. If you haven't seen that, check it out. I had those out all last year and I might put them out again this year. It depends on what I make this year, but these are some of my favorite DIYs in this video. For this project, I'm going to be using these black baskets from Dollar Tree. I used my utility knife to cut off the top of the laundry baskets. I do regret doing this, but I'm sharing it with you guys because that's what I did. And Instead, looking back, I would have left that on and just removed the handle off of the baskets. Inside of my baskets, I'm placing in some skulls that I got from Dollar Tree. I am using my hot glue gun to make sure they stay on top of each other and don't move around. I'm going to be using some hot glue and zip ties to attach another basket on top of that one. Now I'm going to credit Ohai Hunt for this DIY. I have seen this done on TikTok. I've seen people do it on their YouTube channels, but he's the oldest tutorial that I could find on it so that's who i'm gonna give credit to and i'll link them down below for you guys i got these chains from dollar tree and i'm just zip tying them to the basket now the reason i regret taking off the rim of the basket is because i had a skeleton and when i cut off the rim the skeleton no longer fit inside of the basket so i ended up having to go to dollar tree i was only able to find one more of these baskets and i was able to fit my skeleton in that way that's how you make some spooky cages perfect for both indoors and outdoors that that's how you make some spooky halloween cages that are perfect for indoor and outdoor decor 
Now I got some wooden crates from Dollar Tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue some of them together and then paint them white. Really simple to do. I ended up using four of them. I got this four pack of mini cauldrons from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be placing some of them inside of the crates as well as on top of the crates. So I'm going to be making this candy bar. Before I put the candy inside of the cauldrons, I decided to glue on some of the fake spiders that I had purchased from Amazon. I told you guys you're going to see that a lot in this video. I did go over them with some white paint to make them stand out a bit more and make them look less plasticky. Then I fill this up with candy. Obviously, get whatever candy you want. I went with candy corn and then like the candy pumpkins, some candy gummy worms. I did um, some gumballs. I did wrapped candy. So if you don't want this stuff to go stale, put wrapped candy inside of there. If you're going to use it the day of, you can open up the candy and do like candy corn and stuff. I walked away to get something and I saw Matt hit record and do this. He was pretending to steal one of my candy. Anyways, I got this really, really cool easel from Dollar Tree that says candy shop. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to glue that to the back of my wooden crate. So basically it's just like the sign for the candy bar and it looks really cute. It's just like a tiny little candy store, I guess. I, I don't know. It's just absolutely adorable. Now you can see this one was easy. Literally, it was just pretty much gluing things together and then a little bit of paint. Last Last year I made a moving witch broom using an RC car and in that video I told you guys I wanted to make one using a floor vacuum like a Roomba but I never did and people beat me to it so that's what I'm doing in this video. I got half of a styrofoam ball from the craft store for $3.99. I also got a small styrofoam ball from Dollar Tree. I'm taking a broom handle from Dollar Tree and pushing it through the styrofoam half and then through the ball creating a hole. After I have those holes created I use glue to help secure the broom handle through those styrofoam pieces. I then purchased two luau skirts from Dollar Tree and I'm going to use that as the main part of the broom. There's twine underneath the raffia and I use that twine to initially tie the skirt to the handle and then wrap the skirt around using hot glue here and there to make sure it doesn't slide around. I used two skirts total to make this look full. You're going to place your broom on top of your vacuum and then cut off any excess raffia because you don't want it to be getting stuck underneath your vacuum. Now, my vacuum is not a Roomba. It's something I got off of Amazon. However, if you want something like this specifically for this DIY, Five Below does carry a floor vacuum for $25. It does work. However, it's not good at mapping out your house. I bought one before. I used it in a video. I'll link it down below for you guys if you're interested in getting it. To stick this to the vacuum, I'm just using command strips. I'm using four for the bottom and the top of this. So I placed the four on top of the vacuum and then the other four I pushed into the ones that are on the vacuum and then I put glue on the back of that just to make sure it really adheres nicely to the styrofoam because the adhesive that's on there is not enough to make sure it sticks to the styrofoam. I'm gluing some ribbon around the broom. This is just some leather ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. Now. I'll Finally paint your handle Finally, paint the broom handle to look like a wooden stick. To do this, you're just going to start off with your base color. You want to probably go with a brown color. I went with a light brown color. And then to get the wood grain, you can just dry brush a darker brown color over this. So basically, that means dipping a paintbrush inside of some paint, rubbing most of the paint off, and then gliding the paintbrush across whatever surface it is you're doing it across. And it's going to create these small little lines that make it look like a wood grain. This is one of the easier DIYs in this video. It is so easy to do. Now there is a downside to this. The downside is if you're using the Roomba to clean your floors and it's trying to get underneath a couch or underneath a table, the broom handles in the way. Point blank period. So this is not something that you're going to leave on all the time because otherwise your Roomba is not going to be able to clean your floors. You're going to have to remove it and it's easy to remove because there are command strips. For our next project, I got a cauldron from Michaels. If you get it half off, it's $10. I couldn't find one at Dollar Tree that was big enough for this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take tissue paper from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use it to dummy up the bottom. 
Inside of the cauldron, I'm going to place one of these skeleton heads from Dollar Tree. Then I got this two pack of bones from Dollar Tree that I'm also going to put inside of my cauldron. Except I cut one down so that it's a little bit shorter. I used glue to make sure I had the skeleton head exactly where I wanted it to be as well as the bones. Now I got these ornaments from Dollar Tree and I am going to be using the clear ones. So I used two packs of these because there's only three of these in each pack. As I place them down, I remove the silver tops off of them and then I glue some into place because some of them I don't want them to move at all like I put one near the bones and I don't want it to fall down. I then take my hot glue gun and use it to start making some drips coming out of the cauldron. I also used it to make some designs on it so basically I am basing this off of a cauldron that I got at home goods I was like I really want to see if I could recreate it using Dollar Tree products so for the most part I was minus the cauldron itself because of course I had to get it at Michael's. As I was waiting for the glue to dry, I decided to glue down these eyes that I got from Dollar Tree. And then after that, I went ahead and I started painting over the glue. So I had the dripping uh, green color and then the designs I did on the cauldron itself, I painted gold. I didn't like the fact that the skull was a different color from the bones, so I decided to try and color match them a bit so that they looked more like one and the same. And then I got these fairy lights from Dollar Tree. They're actually for a bottle. I decided to loop them around the little ornaments. And finally, I got model magic from Dollar Tree. I decided to roll the model magic into small little balls. And then after they dried, I went ahead and glued them all around the cauldron. And the reason I did this is because, like I said, this is based off of something from Home Goods. I wanted to mimic the little green balls that are in the one from home goods. I then went over that with a little bit of a lime green paint to make it stand out a little bit more. After filming this, I decided to glue on some of the spiders that I got from Amazon. I went spider crazy with this video and I thought it added to the cauldron. So that's how I recreated the cauldron that I saw at home goods. I think this is so cool. I like it so much and I hope you guys do too. If you're familiar with my Halloween tutorials, you know I love to make fake potions. So that's what we're doing. Inside of one of the bottles, I poured in some craft glitter and after that I pour in some water. It almost looks like a lava lamp when you shake it and then inside of another I did the most basic way that you can make potions so you just get some food coloring and mix it with water to get the colors that you want and just pour that color inside of the bottle for this one I mixed together a purple poured a little bit of that purple inside of my potion bottle and then I poured more water than anything to dilute the color inside of another one I put in some reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and to the final bottle that I had that looks like this I got these little skeletons from Dollar Tree and I went ahead and removed the the heads, the arms, the legs, just all the little bones and I just push them through the bottle. I then decided to pour in some water just because I like the way it looks better. The previous bottles you saw from Dollar Tree I think look the most like potion bottles however they don't fit larger items so I ended up finding these glasses at Dollar Tree that I think look really good with that epoxy apothecary is that how you say the word potions so what I did is I put skulls inside of one I did spiders in another I did moss and fake cockroaches in the third in the fourth one I made I decided to do a flying book one so basically I just got these miniature books from Hobby Lobby I glued some of them to strings and then some of them I just glued directly down inside of the glass the ones that are attached to strings I glue the string to the lid of the jar and it makes it look like they're floating inside of there. I got some large mason jars that I decided to put things inside of as well. So I got some butterflies. These are from Michaels, but sometimes you can find some at Dollar Tree. So I put those inside of one of the jars with some moss. This one is my favorite potion bottle. Inside of this one, I poured some water. Then I put a little bit of brown paint to make the water look dirty. Inside of it, I placed a fake snake with the fake spiders that I bought. One of them had a snake inside of it, so that's what I put inside of there. And then I put some like sticks inside of there. This was just my favorite because it's the one that looks the creepiest to me. I've made potion labels in the past. This time around, I decided to buy them. I bought this pack of 50 from Amazon for $4.99. Sometimes they even have them for $3.99. I'll link them down below for you guys. Now they do have a white edging to them. I decided to cut off that white edge because I feel like it looks better. And then I just placed a bunch of potion labels on top of these potion bottles. The only thing is I don't even know what half of them meant. I just put what I thought looked like 
like it would go with the bottle I made or the ones that I like. Like some of the stuff, I don't even know what it is. The only label I made this time was one that said Flying Books for the Flying Book Potion Jar. But those are the potions I made for 2023. I have made so many different ones on this channel. I like to make them different every single year just because I just, I like the way that it looks. I did glue some spiders onto some of the jars this time around. And if you're interested in any of the other potions that I've made in the past, I'll link them down below for you guys. I just like doing them like this because, like I said, it's kind of boring when they're just like pink, red, or just the same color bottle. I like to make them real interesting to look at. I recently made these fake drinks from Dollar Tree in my Dollar Tree Fall DIY video. Basically, the way I did it was I got some resin from Dollar Tree and I poured all of bottle a and bottle b inside of a plastic cup then i mixed some paint inside of there and once i stirred it for five minutes i poured it inside of this beautiful glass that i got from dollar tree it then hardens and you're good to go so i'm going to use these fake drinks to do some halloween drinks so i got a fake pumpkin and i'm going to push it through the straw i did use a knife to start that little hole that i needed to push it through the straw now you're going to need some spackle for this DIY. This is my favorite one and then you're going to need an icing tip and a piping bag. You're just going to pour the spackle inside of the bag. If you want to color it, you can just by using some paint and mixing it in with the spackle. I'm using this as fake whipped cream. I'm just squeezing it out on top of the pumpkin and then I did some designs just below the pumpkin. Real easy to do. Now I got some black paint and just paint a jack-o'-lantern face on the pumpkin. I did another one of these inside of that one. I didn't use resin. Instead, I just used soap from Dollar Tree. You can use soap. All you have to do is pour it out at the end of the season and you can use the hand soap and then use a different hand soap next year if you decide to display this in your home again. And then on top of this one, I pushed a pumpkin through it. And then again, I did some fake whipped cream on top of this. With this one, I made some fake icing or drizzle, whatever you want to call it. The way you do that is you just get some Mod Podge and mix it in with some acrylic paint. Then just pour that on top of your fake whipped cream. I painted a jack-o'-lantern on this one as well. Like I said, you can color the spackle to create some colorful fake mug toppers. To do this, you just need to get some paint, pour it into the spackle, and mix it. So I'm going to do a candy corn look. The way you're going to do this is you're going to get a styrofoam ball, cut it in half, and place that half on top of a paper plate or a foam plate. Then go ahead and take your spackle and start squeezing it around that styrofoam ball. So I start off with a yellow layer of spackle, then I moved on to orange and finally white to create the candy corn look that I wanted. I got some fake sprinkles I'll link down below for you guys that I just sprinkled on top of the candy corn. They're just yellow orange and white sprinkles and then i'm able to take this piece and put it on top of any mug that i want i got some coffee sleeves from starbucks i'm just going to place some of those on some of my glasses and then i'm going to use some of them as a template on top of some dollar tree candy corn fabric so i just place it on the fabric trace around it cut the fabric down and then glue that to the sleeve to create just a candy corn coffee sleeve. You don't necessarily need the sleeve for this, but it's nice because it gives something nice for the fabric to adhere to. That's how you can create some fake drinks using the Dollar Tree resin and soap. Dollar Tree also carries spackle. It's just not my favorite and I make so many fake sweets on this channel that I rather buy the spackle in bulk than the tiny little things from Dollar Tree. This is so easy. Dollar Tree has these $3 giant spiders right now. Get one of those and an RC car, which they also carry or you can get it from Five Below already painted black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my spider with some hot glue to the top of the RC car. It sticks really nicely using hot glue and then I paint the RC car black now the cars from dollar tree they actually have headlights so you'll have to make sure that you paint over those lights you can find an rc car for a dollar and 25 cents at dollar tree the only thing is this one it only goes back and forth it's on the smaller side so it does hide better than the bigger rc car but like i said it goes back and forth it's very hard to control Obviously, this doesn't look super realistic, but it's an easy way to make a moving spider that you can use to prank somebody. You can hide it behind a door or make it come out underneath from like a car, and I'm sure they won't be able to realize that it's fake. Say you don't want to do a moving eye, you can still use these techniques to create a really cool spell book. I got this coffin pencil case from Dollar Tree. I removed the lid and glued that to my book. 
Get some tissue paper from Dollar Tree as well as Mod Podge. You're going to put a layer of Mod Podge on top of your book. Make sure that it's a nice wet layer. Then place your tissue wrap on top of the book and you're going to kind of crinkle it around to start getting wrinkles. Then go back in with some Mod Podge and put a layer on top of the tissue paper. This is going to seal the tissue paper in place as well as make it look more aged. Once the Mod Podge is dried, you can then start painting over it. At first, I was just going to do paint and the tissue paper and leave it at that. But no, I don't have it in me to do that. Like, I use my glue gun to do the details, write something on the side of the book, create some design on the binder. I added spiders just because I can't help myself. Like, no, I... I, I don't I, I like to make things the best that I can and so I just kept going make sure to use some white paint to highlight the skeleton that's on the front of that coffin really make it stand out again and then I went in with green paint and made it look like moss on top of the coffin I love this spell book I ended up making another one it's really really easy to do you guys I'm telling you you just need a glue gun some tissue paper and you're good to go you can add spiders or random things you get from Dollar Tree as well Either or, this is really easy, like I said, and it looks so cool. If you cannot find the luau skirts at Dollar Tree, you can always use their mop heads as a broom. So what you'll do is you'll unravel the mop so it's a bunch of small strings versus the ones that are twisted around each other. It really isn't as time consuming as it looks. Just put something on TV and watch it while you unravel this. I decided to go over this with a dog comb. That way I could just make sure that every string is unraveled and then I could kind of straighten it out a little bit. Now I got some brown spray paint and I spray paint the mop. Now I focus mainly on one side. I do spray paint all of it but I focus on one side really making sure I cover up as much of the white as I can and that's because only one side is really going to be showing for this particular DIY and I do recommend using spray paint because doing this with just regular paint takes forever. Just like the previous broom, I put the same handle back on. I painted it the exact same color. The difference is, is I cut the broom handle down to be shorter. I use my miter shears to do this, and then I take some pliers to open back up that hole after I squished it to or make it shorter and then I just put the cap back on I then got some nautical rope and I wrapped it around the handle of the broom going down where that mop is to make it look more like a witch's broom I got this sign from Dollar Tree I'm actually gonna flip it over and I am going to paint the back of it a beige color with some brown after that I go ahead and I glue it to this DIY MDF wood board from Dollar Tree I then took some black paint and I painted broom parking on the sign now I was initially gonna hang command hooks off of this so that I could hang the broom handles off of the hooks however I couldn't find my hooks at all so instead I ended up using screws before I could use the screws I had to get two more of those MDF boards and glue them to the the back of the main one I had to make it thicker to hold screws. Then I went ahead and screwed through that to hang the brooms off of. Then I ended up dry brushing some white paint on that black board just because I did not like the way it looked. To hang this off of my wall, I just used command strips and that's how I made this broom parking wall art using Dollar Tree products. And you can buy it right now at Marshalls, but it's pretty expensive to get this at Marshalls. Like I said, the only difference is I wish that the black was more of a brown wood color. The next time you're in Dollar Tree, pick up two cocoa plant liners. You won't believe what you can make with these. You're going to place them inside of each other to basically make a Pac-Man head shape. And when you have that shape down, you can then glue them to each other. Hold the cocoa liners together until the glue has completely dried and then move on to gluing another section. When you're in Dollar Tree, pick up a broom handle. You're going to trace the broom handle on the bottom of your coconut liner and create a hole using some scissors. You're then going to push the handle through that hole. Now it's time to paint your coconut liner. I'm using a lime green color on the coconut liner. I recommend using a paint sponge to paint this. It makes it so much easier and do a stippling motion versus a stroke. The edge of the coconut liners has what looks already like a lip so I painted that area red. I also used black paint. I mixed it with my green paint and with my red paint to shade different areas and then I used the black paint on its own especially in the inside of the mouth. Our mouth needs 
teeth. I'm going to be using craft foam I got from Hobby Lobby, but Dollar Tree also carries white craft foam. It's just hard to find sometimes. I glue them inside of the mouth just using hot glue, and I don't like to keep them all white, so I use some shades of brown paint to just dirty up the teeth a little bit. Now I got a pool noodle from Dollar Tree. I cut it down to about three feet, and I push my broomstick through the pool noodle. Now I'm going to be using a planter I got from Dollar General for $10. We're flipping it over, and we're using our drill to create a big hole at the bottom. This way we can place our broomstick through this hole. You don't want it to be too big, otherwise the broomstick is going to fall right over. I placed some gravel and stones at the bottom of this. The stones were from Dollar Tree and the gravel was from Walmart. You just want this to be weighted at the bottom so it's not easy to tip over. I ended up painting the pool noodle. I just used a darker green, black, and brown paint. Once I have that done, it's time to attach some fake greenery. Now this greenery I got at Hobby Lobby. You can use Dollar Tree greenery, but you end up spending more at Dollar Tree than you do just going to a craft store and getting it on sale. And when I glued the greenery to the coconut liner, I held it in place while I wait for the glue to dry. That's how I made these almost five feet tall Venus fly traps, and I made them for under $25. I only needed four Dollar Tree products, plus the greenery from Hobby Lobby, which was $8, and then the planter, which was $10. That is it for these Halloween DIYs. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please let me know your favorite DIY down in the comments below. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.